everyone, it's Kelly for Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me. Today's loaf of soap I've had in my mind for about six to eight weeks now and yesterday I finally decided to give it a go. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that I had a big mess on my workbench. I had soap everywhere and what I was trying to achieve, I did manage to kind of do it but not to the degree that I needed to do it. So I'm back again today to try and make this soap. So what I'm using is Prosecco Rose from Off Aroma. It has notes of watermelon, raspberry, bergamot and Prosecco and it's all on a base of red rose and geranium. So having that rose base, I want little roses to go on the top of my soap. Well, they're not going to be little, they're actually going to end up to be quite big. Just one of the things I learned while trying to make the topping for this yesterday. So... I've been watching the Wilton channel on how to pipe roses and yesterday I gave it a go. This was the very first rose that I piped out and I was really quite happy with it. And then this was one of the last ones I piped. It ended up being quite big but it still does look like a rose. And this was one of the others as well. I had enough mix to make about 10 roses. However, I ended up letting my mix set up too much before getting it into the piping bag. I struggled with the tips that I'd chosen in that they were too small. So I ended up only actually getting four roses out of the mix. So yesterday I decided to clean it all up and come back today. And today we're going to attempt to make some more roses to go onto the top of this soap. So I'm gonna go get some gloves on, my goggles, and we'll get started. For the top of the soap, I want both pink and red roses. Now, the mistake I made yesterday was that I mixed up all of my soap batter, split them out into the colours, and then by the time I got round to the pink batter, it had completely set up and is now curing as an unscented piece of blobbed soap on the curing rack. Um, so this time round, I'm going to mix my pink up first, going to pipe it, and then I'm going to do the red afterwards so that I've got working time for both of my colours. The pink I'm going to be using is French Rose Mica from My Mica Obsession. What I'm going to do is in my bucket here, I have 200 grams of oil and I have my matching lye water all calculated through soap calc. I'm going to pour my lye into my oils, mix it up to a light trace, add some color and bring it up to a medium trace and then pop it into the piping bags and let it sit up just a little bit more before I start piping. So this is actually firming up quite nicely so I'm going to start getting the piping bags ready and then we can start giving these roses a go. To do them I have an open round tip here and I've popped it into my um, piping bag and I've trimmed these piping bags down because there's going to be so little um, batter in these bags I didn't want them to be all over my hands while I was trying to pipe. So we'll just pop that one in first and this is how we make the centre of the roses and then to do the petals I'll be using a Wilton 127 which is a petal tip. I don't have um, the next one down and the one I do have is just a, quite a bit smaller and I found it too hard to pipe out of. So what I'm going to do, I don't need much in this round one so I'm just going to kind of put a dollop in and if I do need to put more in I can take some out of the other piping bag later and um, that should be enough to do the centers and then we'll put the rest into my other piping bag and as I said if I do need that little bit more I can just squeeze some in So we've got the piping into the bags now. I have a little piping nail which I'll use to build my flowers up onto. And in here I have a container just with lots of pieces of um, parchment paper or grease proof paper. I have a little paper cup here. When I did my last um, piped flower top soap, which was the sunflower one, I found it useful to have this paper cup just to sit the, paper, the flower nail into when I needed to put it down and do things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the um, piping bag with the open round tip on it and just take my flower nail, pop a little bit of soap into the centre there and pop a piece of parchment on the top. 
I'm then going to take that same piping bag and I'm just going to pipe myself a little conical shape to start building my rows around. And then what I'm going to do is just pop my flower nail in there. I'm going to grab the other piping bag and this one has that petal tip. And what you want is the thick end at the bottom and then the thin end up the top. And with the piping bag, so it's angled towards that soap in the middle, you start squeezing. And as you turn the flower nail, bring your piping bag up a bit and then back down and you make the center of your rows. Then you can go on to the next layer. So I start, so I'm covering up that sort of joined area there. And this time I'm going to still point towards the center of my flower and I'm going to attempt to put three petals on. So as I'm doing it, I start by squeezing, lifting my piping bag and coming back down at the same time as turning the flower nail. And there we have the next bit. So I could leave it like that as a rosebud, but I do want a couple which are um, a little bit fuller. So I'm gonna go for another round on the outside and this time I'm holding my bag so it is at a, a 90 degree angle to the base. And I'm going to add about five more petals to the outside. And there we have a row. So you could add as many layers as you want to. I'm going to stop there on this particular row. So I'm going to have all different shaped ones. What I have over the back here, which you probably can't see on the camera, I just have a little tray. I'm going to slide my roses off. I'll just bring it over so you can see it. I've slid the rose off and I'm going to leave it on here. Once my tray is full of roses, I'll pop it in the fridge for 20 minutes and then we'll be able to start doing... Um, the rest of the soap. So I'm finding that this red soap batter is actually thickening up a lot quicker than what my pink one did. So I'm now actually thinking when I attempted to do this yesterday, it wasn't so much that I'd let my batter set up quickly. It's got a lot more to do with the really red mica. So I am going to pretty much go through this very quickly so I can get as many of these red roses done for the soap. And I think if I'm going to keep doing these, I need to invest in a slightly bigger flower nail if I can. I 
think I'm pretty much at its end. They're quite heavy, so I can't really put them down onto that little flower now without them toppling off. So I think, yeah, I'm pretty much at the end of that bag. I gave up spraying it with the mica because the soap was setting up quite quickly. So I thought I would spray the mica on at the end. Right, so we've got our roses here. I am going to pop these two trays into the fridge for about 20 minutes. I'm then going to clean this lovely mess up. And once these have firmed up a bit, I'm going to come back and make the bar of soap. We're now up to doing the base of this soap and I have everything set out here that I need. I'm going to start by pouring my lye water into my oils and mixing to a light emulsion, mainly because I'm working with a floral and I have no idea how it's going to behave. So if I can give myself enough working time, that will be fantastic. I am going to do a base colour of the French Rose Mica and then I am going to do a drop swirl of two colours. I have some really red mica from Nurture Soap and I also have some titanium dioxide here which I've dispersed into a little bit of water so I'll do a white colouring. For my white I'm not going to add any of the fragrance oil because I don't know if it discolours or not and there's going to be so little of the white that I don't feel it really needs the fragrance in it. I also have another little pot here with some Caribbean mica from my micro obsession and this is what I'll use to make a little bit of batter for piping leaves at the end so I'll also pour a bit of soap in there. So let's get to making the base of this soap. I'm going to bring my soap mold in now just in case when I add this fragrance oil it decides to do anything too special on me it means that I am then ready to go so I'm going to start by adding it into the pink and just seeing what happens before putting it into that red because I already know that that red mica does accelerate trace and could be even more problematic for me so we'll see what happens So at the risk of actually jinxing myself, it looks like it has actually thinned my batter out just that little bit and it is playing very nicely considering it has all that floral. So I am going to risk putting my oil into the red oh, and then we'll get into pouring. So we've got the roses from out of the fridge now. Now 
I haven't got quite as many as I was hoping I would get but I'm thinking I'm still going to be able to fill this mold up perfectly with them but just in case I am also going to use the roses that I made yesterday um, as well so I've actually got five of them here I thought I only had four um, but I have got five so if I need them I can also use those and what I'm going to start by doing is just picking them up very gently because these are still quite soft Oop. I'm going to peel the paper backing off and then pop them straight on top of the soap and I, the aim is to try and fill the whole bar of soap with roses going down so as I cut them you'll just get bits of the roses on each of the bars so back to pipe the leaves for the top of this soap and I'm using a Wilton 352 leaf tip and it's one of the ones that has the V shape on either side of the nozzle there and when you use it you want to make sure that those V shapes are to the side and as you come in to do your leaf you simply squeeze and pull up and it makes that leaf sort of shape so I'm just going to randomly add some leaves in here and you can also hold your piping bag straight up and down as well as at an angle. Now this green looks pretty dark at the moment but it does actually set into a really nice bright green which is why I chose it and this was the Caribbean green from my micro obsession so I'm just going to keep adding these leaves until I'm happy. Prosecco rose up close. You can see each bar of soap will get bits of roses, both the pink and the red in it. That green for the leaf should become a lot brighter as it um, saponifies overnight. I can already smell that it's going to be a great soap. It's got that real soft rose smell to it. I'm going to leave this to sit for about 24 hours and then we'll come back tomorrow and cut it. So it has been 24 hours since I made Prosecco Rose. You can see that the green has really brightened up and I am completely in love with this bar of soap. I think it is probably one of my favourites that I've made so far. I'm really excited to see what we've got on the inside here. But also at the same time, a little bit sad that I'm cutting up all these pretty roses. But I'm definitely going to give this one a go again. So I have it all lined up on my multi-bar cutter. And I'm going to go slowly through the roses so as not to destroy the petals. And then once we hit that base soap, I can push down that little bit harder. So through we go, almost at that base soap. And now I can start really pushing down that little bit harder and faster. Okay, so we'll grab this piece off the end first. So you can see that we've got some of the petals off the roses and we have a really fine wispy centre to it, which is what I was hoping to actually achieve. So I'm very happy with the colours and how this has all come out. So this next piece again, you can see we've got bits of those roses and a really nice gentle swirl throughout the soap. Okay, so I just had a little bit of an interruption there, so I will come and cut this next part of the soap for
for you as well. And uh, so this is smelling absolutely amazing. The rose fragrance is quite a a nice subtle. I usually find some rose fragrances to be too overpowering, but you can definitely smell the roses like you are walking through a rose garden and it doesn't smell false at all. I'm not picking up those fruity notes, the watermelon and the raspberry, but I definitely pick up a little bit of the bergamot and the, um, the red rose that's in this. So here's another piece here. I have thoroughly enjoyed making this soap and I've managed to get the look that I was hoping to achieve in here. Just the wisps of red and white in that pink. So I also hope you've enjoyed watching me make um, this loaf of soap. If you have, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell sign so you can be notified when I bring you each week's video. So thank you for watching. Until next time, bye.